Good day, ladies and gents. Good day, ladies and gents. Good day, ladies and gents. Kick me into here. My next video introducing cyclical crafting systems. My next video about synchronous dropper auto crafters. A video covering the basics of auto crafting. Our first auto crafter is a simple block compactor. The here is a one by tileable design that utilizes a feed tape. The way this works is because we can only put in five items at a time, this can handle three by three recipes and focus on making a new and better design. Here it is. Universal Auto Crafter. The Auto Crafting Table is great and all, but some recipes are especially difficult. G'day ladies and gents, Cubic Meter here. It turns out I missed a lot in the most recent Minecraft Live. I mean, at that time, I'm either falling asleep or already asleep, so fat rip for us Aussies. But when I did finally catch up with the new features, I was pleasantly surprised to find this. An Auto Crafting Table. In vanilla Minecraft? Now if you're a true veteran of the channel, you might remember my first videos about an auto crafting table implemented using mods. It was great content at first, but at some point I had to move on to projects more relevant to the vanilla Minecraft experience. And this is generally the problem with features not being in the vanilla game. Minecraft is a game about exploration and discovery, and often we want to share these discoveries. But if the discovery uses a feature that does not come with the official game distributed by the Minecraft launcher, it presents a barrier to the shared gameplay experience. The principle of auto crafting is very simple. Instead of the crafting table being a GUI only usable by the player, instead make it an inventory that can store items in the crafting slots. In the original mods, there were two competing implementations of the auto crafting table. Skyrising's Quick Carpet implemented an option that would make all crafting tables behave like inventories. This was incredibly powerful because you could input ingredients and magically get crafted items out. This was very intuitive, as you just have items go in and items come out. However, it had the drawback of turning the crafting table from a block that could be easily moved to a block entity which cannot be moved. But back in the day, I was also a fanatic about movable block entities. Like come on Mojang, the implementation is so easy that it can literally be toggled on and off while you're playing. Then there's Nembon's implementation called the Auto Crafting Dropper. Which when a crafting table was placed in front of a dropper, that dropper would perform the crafting operation with the shape of the items in its inventory like so. By separating the item storage aspect from the crafting table block, it could remain a simple movable block. So it seems that Nembon's implementation was certainly the inspiration for the final product. Which is unsurprising given that Nembon works as a developer at Mojang. So what can we learn about the current implementation of the crafter? Well, if you go to input items using redstone, they trickle into the slots one by one. Oh, and that's interesting. Once all the slots are filled, it will loop back around and start filling up the slots one by one again. But you can also disable slots. Like so. And this will force the shape of recipes. Now that is incredibly powerful. And interestingly, you can also remove items from the crafting slots with a hopper underneath. And it will remove items from the slots instead of removing items from the output. So I guess the only way to craft the item at the output is to actually power the crafter. This implementation has a lot of fascinating implications. For example, in the original implementation of the auto crafting table, the way that the slots were managed was extremely unintelligent, meaning in order to disable slots you had to put in dummy items to force the item to skip slots and then you had to remove those items afterwards in order to make shaped recipes. However, in this implementation, you can actually disable the crafting slots in order to force the shape of a recipe. There was also a massive limitation with the previous implementation, in that once all the slots were filled, they wouldn't continue filling, meaning that the only way to get stacks of items in the slots was to input them manually with the player. The reason you would want to do this is that by stacking up the items in the crafting slots to craft an unstackable item like a minecart, you essentially get 64 times the storage density for something that is normally unstackable. 
A great example of where I've done this with the auto crafting table in the past is to greatly increase the storage density of minecarts for piston bolts. Something that is a bit alarming for me at least is that the signal strength for the crafter only goes up to 9 to represent 9 slots filled with items. And this also increments for slots that you disable. The reason why the range from 0 to 9 is not very useful is that we often use signal strengths of 15 in one wide tileable systems to detect when a storage is ready. To understand why we want the range 0 to 15 instead of 0 to 9, let's have a look at this simple auto crafting compactor which will compact iron ingots into iron blocks. Now the input of items for this is much slower than the output for items. So we'll want to stack multiple of these crafters side by side to run the crafting operation in parallel to speed it up. And a simple way to do this is to make the design more more tileable. And as you can see, with this implementation of the auto crafting table, as the slots fill up, it behaves like a normal inventory and ranges the signal strength from 0 to 15. Now, it's actually extremely easy to make one more tileable mechanisms that can detect signal strength 15. Trying to detect a signal strength of a 9 in a one wire tileable system on the other hand is a lot less clean and elegant. It's also a lot more prone to being stuffed with by rampant signals. They definitely changed the range to 0 to 15 instead of the 0 to 9 that we have currently because this is way more elegant. I should probably also point out this consistency issue where dispensers and droppers can both be quasi powered, however the current implementation of the crafter cannot. You would think that given it behaves exactly like a dropper, it should also be possible to quasi power it. That would just enable so many more options for powering it. Quasi connectivity has already been established as a feature of the Java edition, so it would be pretty nice to have new blocks added which can tap into this amazing way of powering things. And before you respond to saying that Bedrock Edition doesn't have quasi connectivity and that would be a parity issue, well, the entirety of Redstone is a parity issue between Java and Bedrock, so it wouldn't really make a difference. So now that we're going to play around with the crafter for a bit, let's talk about the Universal Auto Crafter. This is the ultimate goal of any automated crafting system where you can take bulk materials, such as these materials for crafting pistons, input them in the corresponding crafting slots like so, hit a button, and then watch as the items magically fill the crafting slots. And our crafted product comes out the other end. Now this is an extremely complex machine, but of course, it works. However, this concept relies on the modded implementation of the auto crafting table, which happens to be movable. The crafter on the other hand is not movable. And the main issue with making this block do universal auto crafting is that you have nine different slots which might need different items at different times. And unfortunately, we simply run out of faces to input items. It could do something like identifying patterns and the resources that go into each slot and optimizing for specific recipes, but in those cases, you don't end up making a universal system. I was able to get around this issue with the modded implementation by simply moving the crafting table under multiple inputs. So until we get movable block entities implemented in the Java edition, this is going to be an unfortunate limitation of the crafter. But who knows, maybe this is the update where Mojang finally realizes that changing a few lines of code to make block entities movable is actually worthwhile. So I'm certainly looking forward to seeing what Mojang has in store for this update, and whether they'll actually listen to the technical community about what features we need for this block to be useful in a technical setting. So that was just a short video exploring some of the technical aspect of this new block. With a more rigorous implementation, we will hopefully be able to explore it much more in depth. Because obviously, a lot of very powerful tech could come from this single block. And if you don't mind the terrible mic quality, be sure to check out my older videos about the auto crafting table, because a lot of those concepts will still be relevant to the crafter going forward.
Thank you all very much for watching and I will see you next time.